Welcome back to Weatherbox. My name's Steve, and I got a haircut. Not because of Roger here. It's tornado season, and I gotta be as aerodynamic as humanly possible. My last video on the series on tornado damage paths visible on Google Earth blew up, and you guys had some fantastic suggestions in the comments on different tornado paths that I missed that we're going to check out today. Every single one of these tornado damage paths is visible on the desktop version of Google Earth Pro. With that being said, let's take a look. Very large tornado. We have witnessed multiple funnels with this. We may actually quickly try to get in our cars and get south of this. That'd be the same safest place to do that. I think we have to go now in order to stay ahead of this and not get run over by it. The El Reno tornado was by far the most requested damage path for me to look at from my last video. On May 31st, 2013, a 2.6 mile wide multiple vortex monster tornado carved a very erratic and dangerous damage path to the south of the city of El Reno, killing four storm chasers. It was the widest tornado ever recorded and it completely changed the storm chasing game forever. Luckily, the tornado itself stayed mainly over fields. Satellite imagery taken two days after the tornado shows the massive scar in the ground, however, on the Google Earth side of things, the earliest imagery we have after the tornado is from October of 2013, and you can't see anything. This is why the El Reno tornado was not on my list. Yes, it's incredible, but on Google Earth, you just really can't see anything. Next up is the Parkersburg, Iowa tornado on May 25th, 2008. Massive disruption, large gas leaks, um, flattened houses. I'm very serious. They need to get here and shut down this area. State patrol, everybody. Parkersburg is a small rural town in Iowa with a population of about 1,900 in the mid-2000s. On May 25th, 2008, an EF5 tornado carved a 43-mile path from south of Applington to north of Dunkerton, Iowa. The EF5 damage occurred during the first half of the tornado's life, and unfortunately, during that time, it hit the south side of Parkersburg. The tornado damaged 400 buildings, including two schools, the elementary school and the high school. Both of these schools were located on the far northern half of the damage path. This here is the elementary school and this was the high school, but both were declared a total loss. Seven people were killed in the Parkersburg tornado, but considering the damage, it could have been a lot worse. This image was taken three months after the tornado struck, and many houses are empty lots, and most trees south of 3rd Avenue are gone. Over 270 of the damaged homes were rebuilt. The trees that were planted immediately after now have seen over a decade of growth, and the town actually increased in population by 7.8% over the past 10 years. Here's a street view image of somebody's home on 4th Street in 2021. These new houses all look pretty good. They really don't look out of place. I think they fit the community very well. Next up is the Hallam, Nebraska tornado, which occurred on May 22nd, 2004. Wind gusts to 80 miles per hour are possible. This watch includes the Beatrice listening area. Not a very good spot, but... Hallam is a very small town in Nebraska with a population of 276 people in the 2000 census. On May 22, 2004, a 2.5 mile wide F4 tornado completely flattened the town. The diameter of the tornado was actually over three times wider than the diagonal width of the town. With the center of the tornado passing just south of the town, Hallam likely escaped the most intense winds in the tornado. Looking at satellite imagery from 11 months after the tornado, we can see that most, if not all of the trees are gone, the grain bins that once stood were torn down and replaced, and about a third of the buildings are missing. And today the town actually looks pretty good. There's definitely still some empty lots for sale, but most of the trees that were replanted now have about two decades worth of growth. And personally, I would have never guessed that at one point a tornado had swallowed this town. Up next is the Mayfield, Kentucky tornado that occurred on December 10th, 2021. The debris ball is now coming into Mayfield. Um, Send some prayers to Mayfield right now. Uh, let's, let's, let's keep our friends in prayers across the area right now, and especially in Graves County. Uh, this is going to be a bad deal for us, okay? Mayfield, Kentucky is a town of about 10,000 residents in the far western corner of Kentucky in Graves County, and currently the city is going through hell. On December 10th, 2021, a high-end EF4 traveled a continuous 165 miles through Woodland Hills, Tennessee, Mayfield, Kentucky, Dawson Springs, Bremen, and eventually lifted near the Rough River Dam State Resort Park. The satellite imagery for this tornado was made visible on Google Earth very recently, and although it only contains the city of Mayfield, it's pretty wild. The death toll from this tornado was 57. Nine of those people were in the Mayfield Consumer Products Candle Factory, 
working when the tornado hit. And this factory got absolutely annihilated. It was alleged by five different employees that they were threatened to be fired if they were to go home and seek shelter before the tornado hit. One of these employees was trapped underneath a pile of rubble for six hours and she had to be interviewed from her hospital bed. Granted, the company denied these allegations outright, but it's my personal opinion that I believe the five individual accounts of the workers. One of the survivors, Kiana Parsons Perez, broadcasted herself on Facebook while being trapped underneath several feet of debris for three hours. This both kept her calm and let people know that she was okay, but that the workers needed help. This plant will not reopen, causing 250 people in Mayfield to lose their jobs, which is a major blow. The tornado continued into the downtown area, first damaging a bunch of storage bins here. This used to be a water tower. It is now a mangled piece of metal. Just west of the center of town, you can really see the EF4 damage right here. You have multiple story structures that are just completely destroyed. The western side of downtown took a direct hit, which was composed mostly of brick buildings, including the First Christian Church, First Presbyterian Church, the U.S. Post Office, and some small diners and restaurants. The Graves County Courthouse had its roof ripped off, and this beautiful clock tower on the northern side of the building unfortunately fell off. Looking at this damage path, I can't help but think of Xenia in 1974. Of course, Xenia was so much more intense, but the damage path and the structure of the town, they're both pretty similar. It continued to the northeast, destroying many more homes and uprooting most of the trees. It then hit the Mayfield Health and Rehabilitation Nursing Home, which was declared a total loss. And this is the latest imagery we have of the town. It's going to take a lot more time than five months to recover. Next up, we have two cities that were affected on April 27th, 2011, that I really neglected to talk about in the last video, and I want to do them justice. Reports within the last 10 minutes of tornado damage. This is significant, and this is heading towards Smithville. The first is Smithville, Mississippi, which got hit with an EF5 tornado. Smithville had about 1,000 residents living there at the time of the tornado. It rampaged through the northern side of town, killing 16 and destroying over 100 structures, including the total loss of four churches, city hall, the post office, and the police station. So because the earliest imagery we have after the tornado is from 2013, I actually went online and found aerial photos taken a couple days after the tornado hit, and I was able to overlay them onto Google Earth and this is what that looks like. The resolution is not the best, but you can tell that the tornado really demolished every single home that was in this area, and it took out all the trees. Not only did the tornado hit houses, but it also took out the post office, which was down here, and the fire department and police department were in this area, which both took a direct hit. The wildest story from this tornado is that a red Ford Explorer was lofted into the tornado over here, thrown into the Smithville water tower right here, bounced off the water tower and ended up in a mangled pile of metal somewhere over here. So that's a couple thousand feet and the water tower is still standing to this day. Chris Lasalkis from Eyes to the Sky Weather was actually able to confirm in August of 2018 that the water tower is still standing and the dent is still there. I'm not sure if the water tower has come down yet, but I think it's still standing. And if you go there, you'll probably see the Ford Explorer dent. Next up is the town of Phil Campbell. Now I showed Hackleburg in the previous video and Phil Campbell is about nine miles to the northeast, and it was directly in the path of that dangerous EF5 tornado that hit Hackleburg. And this imagery from September of 2011 really shows how everything along and south of Route 237 was just wiped clean. Three churches were completely destroyed in the town, and a section of asphalt was actually lifted and peeled from a road and tossed about a thousand feet away. Today, the southeast side of town remains pretty barren. And now for something completely different, the Menominee Reservation Tornado of June 5th, 2007. This is the Menominee Reservation in northern Wisconsin. As you can see, it's mostly forest. If we go to 2007, there's a very, very clear tornado path right in the reservation. It didn't really hit that much besides forest, but it did hit the Bear Paw Outdoor Adventure Center, which six of the 10 buildings that it contained were destroyed. The tornado did hit another place, and this is the very small community of Riverview located along Highway 32. There's a volunteer fire department over here, and there's a bar and a couple houses over here, and they got completely wiped out by the tornado. A man by the name of Tom O'Neill took shelter in a bathtub, and he was actually lofted about 100 or so feet into the tornado. Despite all of that, he escaped with only a few bruises. And today, 15 years later, the damage path is still 
nearly as visible as it was when the tornado hit. And now for the wild card of the evening, it's the South Moravia tornado in the Czech Republic on June 24th, 2021. This tornado was part of a small European tornado outbreak and was the first violent tornado to hit Europe since 2015. In total, it damaged over 1,200 buildings, killing six and injuring over 200. It touched down near the town of Jitslav and then barreled through the southern half of Ruski, damaging 85% of the buildings in town. Moving east, the small market town of Moravska Nova Ves, inhabiting 2,600 people, took a direct hit. All the blue that you're seeing in this image is just most likely tarps that they threw on top of the houses that had lost their roofs. Continuing east, the town of Mikulcice also took a direct hit, having a population of 2,000 at the time. A bus was actually picked up and thrown into a house here, causing multiple severe injuries. The tornado traveled parallel to 05531 through Lujice and Hodonin, a city of 24,000 people. The tornado started to grow very narrow at the time, as also shown by the pictures, but it still completely leveled homes in this area. I believe this is a zoo here in Hodonin, and it took a direct hit from the tornado as it was weakening. Here we can see where the tornado hit a line of trees, and that is where our imagery ends. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed part two. I really enjoyed making it. Leave your suggestions in the comments below if you got any, and I will probably be making a part three sometime this summer. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next Wednesday.